All right, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. So today we're going to look at the Snedonia Deluxe Master Set from the NSKN Kickstarter. This is one of my all-time favorite worker placement games, but it's uh, kind of hard to navigate this gigantic box because they put all the scenario stuff in there. So we'll take a look at the base game. I'll have other videos on uh, the other scenarios and we'll go through with the setup video, rules video, links uh, down here, a playthrough video, and my finally my thoughts uh, at the end. So let's get to it. All right, base game setup. So I'll set up the game for three players. So first, pick the side of the board you want to play on. They're functionally identical. Next, you're going to grab all the cards with SD on the bottom right hand side. Next, we're going to update the action overlay section here. For three players, we don't actually have to change anything. But if you were playing with uh, less or more players, there are these cards to increase or reduce the amount of uh, worker placement spots per action. Next, we're going to grab our track cards, give it a nice shuffle, because along with the uh, station cards, we're going to build our route up the mountain. So the station cards are marked in order from 1 through 7. Uh, there are some that you'll have to keep an eye on for player count. And on the top left here, you'll see how many t uh, track cards are between this station and the previous station. So for station number 1, there are two track cards between this and the previous station. For station two, there's only one. You'll do this for all the stations up the mountain. I won't bore you with this step, but you get the idea. Next, you're gonna fill up the rubble cubes on all the cards. So wherever you see a, a shovel icon, you'll put that many cubes on the card. So on and so on. Next, we're gonna look at the default resources available at the start of the game. They're printed on the board, so you'll just put in that much ore stone and coal. Let's set up our default excavation and uh, uh, laying track rate here. Uh, next we're going to set up our site office. You're going to grab the uh, contract deck. Again, all the ones with SD on the bottom right. Give it a nice shuffle. There are a couple of cards you'll take out if you're playing one or two players. You'll splay out the top three. And wow, it's going to be raining in the future. Uh, Cards 2 and 3 will actually tell you what our weather will be like in turns 2 and 3. So this is turn 2 and this is turn 3. Uh, next we're going to set up our uh, train market. I'll put all these cards on the board. All you really need to know about these trains is some of them do start with coal on them. So you're going to put those coal cubes directly on the card so they don't go into the bag. Next we're going to set up our bag. So how we do that? We're going to use our cheat sheet here and it'll tell us how much ore stone go into the bag and you'll end up dumping all the uh, rest of the coal and the event cubes back into the bag. Next, for players, you give them two workers and 16 markers. You'll put their third worker in the pub. You'll put their surveyor at base camp. And I think that's it. This is what it should look like when we're done. Well, here's the setup for three players. Uh, a couple of things. I like to keep these tokens on the board for easy access. And uh, lastly, there is a special card. You'd want to keep it close by. You'll use it near the end of the game. Okay, welcome to the uh, complete rules breakdown for Snowdonia base game. So Snowdonia at its core is a worker placement game. We're going to be placing our workers, resolving those actions. We'll keep going until the end game is triggered. Uh, how do we win? Well, we'll be scoring victory points denoted by this yellow icon here. Nothing is calculated during the game, that's why there's no victory point track going around the board, but everything is tallied at end game. So at the base game, there are five ways to score. There's an actual train you can buy for points, there's contracts can fulfill, tracks can lay, stations you can build, and wherever your surveyor ends at the end game is going to score you some points. So there's no set number of turns in Snowdonia. Uh, you'll just keep going until the end game is triggered, but this Every turn is made up of the same five steps. There's placing your workers, resolving the actions, uh, updating the site office, changing the weather, and refilling the cube market. So let's talk about each of those. So step one is placing your workers. So starting with the first player, working clockwise, you're each going to be placing your workers on the available spots up here. So by default, we all have access to two workers. Uh, there is a third worker you can get from the pub, 
uh, for one coal, but you can only do that if you've previously purchased a train. So we'll talk about that later when we talk about trains. So that's step one. Step two is resolving the actions. So always in numbered order from A through G, uh, you'll resolve the action. So let's take a look at some of these actions. So action A is grabbing three cubes from the general supply with a maximum of one cold cube. If you did place your marker on the highest number of action A, you'll be first player for next turn. So in this example, let's say green would take three, four. When you perform the action, just remove your marker from the board. Action space B is excavate. So what you're gonna do is look at the shovel icon here and the excavation rate is the number above it. So how that works is you're going to remove the number of rubble cubes starting from the base of the mountain equal to the excavation rate. So in this example it's 4, so we remove 4 cubes. You have to remove the full amount and these cubes will go into your personal supply. If you completely remove the rubble off a station, you'll place your marker there. And if you completely remove the rubble off a, a track card, you'll just flip it over. This is just an indication that in the future you can lay track into this space. Next action spot here is the conversion uh, action space. So three times you can convert three ore into a steel bar or two rubble into a stone. The stone will actually come from the bag and the uh, ore that you use will actually go back into the bag. Next action spot here is lay track. So let's say in this example it's uh, two. Let's say this one was built. So if there are two tracks available uh, and the rate is two, for each steel bar that you turn in, you can build a track. So in this example, yellow can turn in two steel bars to build two tracks. He would just put his markers on the track. Uh, keep in mind, you must uh, build both tracks if you are able to, you can't do, uh, you can't do less. Next is build station or buy a train. Uh, you can't buy a train until this event is triggered. We'll talk about that later about, uh, when we talk about events, but I'll just talk about buying trains now anyway. So buying a train is pretty simple. The cost of the train is in the top left, uh, and the top right is the ability that it grants you from now on. The middle here is just a reminder that at the beginning of the turn, you can turn in a coal for that extra worker from the pub. At the end of the turn, he will be returning to the pub. The bottom right here is just the uh, indication whether it comes with a cold cube or not when you purchase the train. Um, players have access to only one train. Uh, if you would purchase your second train, your first train would get returned back into the engine shed. Uh, building a station. Uh, what you do is on rows two and three, it indicates a resource and the victory points are on the bottom right. You turn in that resource and put your marker on the station. So I forgot to mention where you could build on a station. So as long as the track cards before that station have been excavated, you could build. They don't have to be built, but they have to be excavated. So you'd be able to build in these three stations, but you would not be able to build in this station because the track cards leading up to it have not been excavated. Also, you could build in this station even though the station itself has not been ex excavated. Thanks. This is the site office. Uh, that grants you access to pick up a contract card. So let's just look at a random contract card here. The top of the card is the actual contract and the middle of the card is a special ability you can activate on the action space uh, lettered here. Uh, this is a one-time ability per game so what I like to do is once you trigger it just tap it and put it on the side so you don't accidentally trigger it again. So whether you trigger it or not you can still fulfill the contract on top. Uh, so for this example if you had six rubble cubes and had built one track or well, one track marker you'd gain that many points. Uh, also keep in mind if you have uh, multiple cards that use the same resources. For example, if I had this card twice, uh, I would need 12 rubble to satisfy both cards and two tracks to satisfy both cards. The resources don't carry over. The last action space here is pretty simple. It's just move your surveyor. So you just take your surveyor and move them on to the next spot. Pretty simple. So that's 
Uh, step two. Step three is uh, updating the uh, contract uh, site office here for the contract. So if nobody has taken the first card, it'll actually go into the trash and then you'll slide everything over. Replace with the top of the deck. Done. Step four was uh, updating the weather. So you slide the weather patterns up. The top, uh, the weather pattern on the top of the contract deck will actually tell you which weather goes into the third spot here. And then you'll adjust the uh, the rates according to the handy dandy table on the board. So in this example, we can't actually move the the markers anymore because they're already at their maximum. Now, how does fog work? If it would uh, be a fog uh, weather event, you'd actually block off the the excavation and lay track actions for the following turn. There is a thin fog variant, which is, I would suggest for your first game is instead of blocking off the whole action, you just block off the highest numbered spot. Then these will get returned at the end of the turn. The fifth step is refilling the general supply. So what you're going to do is look at the little chart here and it'll tell you for the amount of players, how many cubes you're going to remove from the bag and add them to the general supply. So in a three player games, you'll take nine cubes. So there are white cubes. What are white cubes? White cubes are event cubes. So how that works is whenever you pull a white cube, you'll just add, cover up an event and trigger the event. So events are mostly just the game pushing the game along so that it ends faster. So excavation works uh, uh, very similar to the players, except for instead of removing that many rubble cubes, you actually remove uh, that much rubble from cards. So uh, in this example, four, you you'd remove the rubble of uh, one, two, three, and four cards. That's a lot of rubble. Then you flip these over. The next uh, event uh, here is a train purchase. So until this event is triggered, nobody can actually purchase a train with this action spot. After that, it's late track. So very similar to players, you're going to look at the rate, so it's two, so the AI will build two tracks. What I like to do is just remove the cards from the game because nobody can build those tracks. Um, in this case where uh, there is only one track available and the next track has rubble on it, it will actually uh, excavate and build track uh, when building the rail. So in this example, it would still remove both cards. Uh, now, the next uh, event here is build station. So how that works is uh, starting from the base of the mountain, you're going to take one of these do not build tokens and place it on the first station that is not 100% complete. So in this example, you would put it on this card. Uh, in a situation where this one was 100% complete, you'd put it onto the next card. Now, any uh, scoring tokens would still score at the end game if they were, even if that token would be placed onto this card. And the last event to talk about here is the train maintenance event. So when this is triggered, anyone that owns a train will have to uh, pay a steel bar or return their train back into the engine shed here. Uh, always remember that once, if you remove, uh, return a train into the shed, you need to uh, add a coal from the bag if it has uh, a coal icon on the bottom right of the card. Uh, now, at the end of the turn, if you triggered action space 4, 7, and 10, uh, below it it will tell you which cubes actually get returned back into the bag. So here would be these three would return back into the bag. And that does it for a whole turn. Don't forget to return your third worker if you had one. And you're just going to keep going until the game end is uh, triggered. So game end triggers in two ways. The first is if the a player builds a last track, so that would be this space here then you would end the turn at the end of that turn. Uh, you'd end the game at the end of that turn. Or if the AI would build it using one of the events here, uh, what you do is you'd play one more round and then end the game. After that, 
you tally up the points and figure out who won. There's only one last thing I need to mention. There is this special card here. If at any point uh, you run out of uh, cubes to excavate, what you do is you'll actually replace this card on top of action space B. Uh, so you have extra spaces to uh, build on the uh, station. So that's it.